and all the way from Europe to talk us through the behavior of orcas. Let's welcome Philip and Jeroen, please. Hello. Hi. I think the headlines that we've seen, and you know, there's one of these things that's been around social media and it's kind of funny, which is the orcas hate us. They're trying to get us out of the, out of the ocean. They don't like us anymore. Is that what's happening here? It's a new behavior that started around three years ago. And, and the numbers are, are quite shocking. So the, um, the researchers there, they, they, um, they call it um, uh, an interaction when these orcas show interest in a, in a boat. And they call it a sighting when the orcas just go on their own way and continue swimming. And they reported uh, last year over 200 of these interactions. And actually, three ships uh, were sunk. So these can be quite uh, strong interactions. Like, for instance, the, the animals would direct their focus on the rudder and keep banging into it until it breaks off the boat comes to a complete standstill and then the orcas take off again let's watch this uh clip that we sent over so so this is a pod of orca which we filmed a shrank of this strikes our boat mm. it strikes our boat at that moment oh right so this is here. with um Andrew Sutton, a filmmaker who you and I know, and that was filmed in the Indian Ocean. That was in 2017. So that was a real um, intervention by the orca on us. Right here. Um, so it was right here, right where it ran your boat. Bang. Wow. Bang. Actually, actually, you did it five times. Five times? Yeah. And then uh, we had another scientist on board who had a, a hydrophone, which is an underwater microphone in the water he pulled it back up and it had been bitten off but then the question comes like what's going on there why all of a sudden is has this started and um, what could be a potential explanation and one of the the hypothesis there is that it's younger animals mostly doing this the the, the sons and daughters of these matriarchs and um it's been suggested that it's just curiosity and then uh, that has started this behavior and after that there's some copycats that, that try to do the same thing maybe turn the boat around it might sound like fun that's one of the hypotheses but on the other side if you look if you zoom in a bit on the system over there um these these iberian orcas they feed exclusively on bluefin tuna so the bluefin tuna they migrate to the strait of gibraltar they migrate up and down the spanish coast and these orcas, they follow them around and only eat that fish. And there's also a fish that is commercially very interesting. It's very valuable. So there is a, a quite quite a large fishery there aiming these, these bluefin tuna. And part of these fisheries still use tradi traditional methods, sort of long lines with hooks. And these orcas have figured out that when an, a bluefin tuna is on the line and the, the fishermen are pulling it in, that it's very easy to, to capture it. So they kind of snatch it off the line. So they swim towards the boat, they grab this tuna. And of course, uh, the, the fishermen don't really like that. So they just try to chase away these orcas. There has been reports of, um, of injuries of, um, for instance, orcas getting entangled by the line, but also actively being chased away by these fishermen. There has even been reports of amputation of the, of the flipper. So these, you can already see that oh there's sort gosh. of this tension between the fisheries on one side and the orcas on the other side. The fishermen don't like the orcas stealing their super precious bluefin tuna. And the orcas don't like the, the, the fishermen for uh, inflicting these wounds directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. And I think in my point of view, and this is again the speculation, I, I, I find that this, this tension field there to be sort of connected to these interactions between the boats. The, 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 the tension between the fishing in that area has been on, going on for a long time, but something's intensified now. And I don't know what it is, but we know that there's a lot of sound pollution in their, in their, in their, in their environment now. Um, that's that's quite relatively new. So these are, animals can live at extreme levels up to 100 years. So there's probably animals, orca around now, maybe matriarchs, who would remember an ocean that was much quieter before seismic surveys, before marine sonar, the military sonar, before or generally all the hubbub that's going on in their world, which is really impacting their health. Uh, that really is impacting their health. Um, the, the resident population of orca off the off north of Britain haven't had a healthy calf for 10 years. Wow. So there's a lot of effects going on. And in my mind, because they're very cultural animals, they communicate 
a, 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 a pod history, a, a pod will have a history. Um, the, you know, that they have, they must have their own narrative of what's happening. Going off of that, I think let's get into that bit because I think since it's so popular and it's all over the news, that's when the sensationalizing happens. And I'd like both of you to sort of get into that, where, what the harm of sensationalizing this type of coverage, coverage is, but then also prescribing human behaviors on animals, right? Like other animals. He's saying something really interesting in chat. Sharpie Diesel is saying, uh, my fear is that they will try to convince people that it's good to go after orcas. Yeah, and that's a say that major risk. Really? So what is it? If they're curious animals, they might approach a boat in any region, in any particular time. And, they, and, and there has been no report of an orca actually hurting a human being in the wild. Mm -hmm. So there have been some reports in captivity. It's not a natural situation. But and now if you think interactions between orcas and humans on the other side, and never ever has there been uh, a report of an orca actually injuring a human being. And now all of a sudden we have this 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 large bulk of works showing up that these orcas are threatening ships that they might sink your ship um, because it happened three times, which still is extraordinary. But if you think about how often orcas approach ships and that nothing mm -hmm. happens, it's actually um, yeah might influence the be behavior of of the people on board. So if if an orca now approaches a boat, they might try to rush away or try to deter the orca. There's been uh, anecdotes of people pouring stuff in the water, some fuel or even chlorine to try to to chase them away. So this is this is is quite risky. And actually, the option with boats, with rudders, but it's not directed at at human beings at all. And by demonizing these animals, we might influence the behavior of the people that that might encounter this completely benign animal anywhere in the world. Really, that's such a good. Uh, so has Yurun with whales. Big whales like sperm whales with orca with other whales many many times i've never felt so safe i've never felt so safe um because you realize they are sentient animals that you realize that they are very curious about you and i think that's what when i drew sutton and i were in, in sri lanka when the orca were circling us and even ramming our boat and they've been using this mock tactic of almost flipping the boat over the way they do with a nice flow and to tip a seal off it at no point did that actually really feel threatening it was a game and I, and I think a lot of this stuff is about learning like Yurin says and play um, and their mm. absolute curiosity about human beings because they don't see anything else like us in the water you know they know that we're not sharks they know we're not seals um, they're very right. interested in us. If you've got highly cultural animals like dolphins, like sperm whales, like orca, um, they're going to be interested in other, in other mammals. Or what orca probably think about us is that we are mildly interesting, we're useless in the ocean, we, we muck, muck things up a bit, and basically, you know, maybe we'll be gone quite soon. So they, they don't want to kill us. They really do not want to. If they wanted to kill us, they would do that. <laughs> they really don't want to do that. Easily. One thing that I find really interesting is if you look at the memes and you look at the comments, one of the things at least that I see on my circle is that uh, you see people cheering on the org. You know, again, we're saying, oh, they're attacking humans. Go orcas. Yeah, get them. And it's just, <laughs> bro, you're a human. Like, if you go on the water, you're going to be in a boat. <laughs> whose side, not that we need to pick sides, but whose side do you want, right? And it, it feels in a way, like, to bring climate change into it, right? And to bring, you know, the way that we treat the environment into it. It's like, in a weird way, we're tearing the planet up. And then when you've got this kind of symbolic animal that in our imaginations is fighting back, we're cheering it on, but it's just... Because where we are with the climate crisis, with all sorts of pressures on our world, but very much on the oceanic world, the, the orca becomes a kind of a spirit animal again, uh, much like a hider orca as uh, a spirit animal as well as the real animal. And so it's, it's laden with all these our angst 
Um, whales have very broad backs. They've always had to carry human angst. Moby Dick is all about human angst. It's not really about whales. It comes from feeling powerless, right? So many of the 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 big movements that we've seen over the last one, two decades are, are coming from like a feeling of powerlessness, whether it's like 99% or um, now the climate change, like you can try to, to do your thing to contribute to a better environment or to make the world a little bit better, but you're you always feel like, yeah, what what is the effect? Uh, large companies or or um, or governments are are where it really happens. What can I do? And then the orca feels sort of like this idealized warrior fighting against uh, billionaire yachts that polluting our oceans and and yeah. stealing all the fish. So it becomes sort of this this yeah a symbol of um, something that we cannot be ourselves or that we want to be ourselves. 